A container can be thought of as a sandbox for a process. From the perspective of the process, it's running on its own computer with its own network interface, host name, IPC channels, process IDs, file system, and so forth. It is isolated. And yet, a containerized process is still just another process running on the Linux kernel. You'll see what I mean by this in a minute. Containers have some distinct advantages. First of all, containers enable repeatable deployments, regardless of the environmental differences between host machines. No more need to worry about the subtle differences between a development machine, a test server, and the various production servers that you're using. Nor do you need to worry about the inevitable drift in the state of an environment. You know, that situation where your app used to work just fine on a computer, but now fails to run on that same machine for some strange reason. In the end, containers eliminate these kinds of problems. Containers are able to do this because they encapsulate a process along with all of its dependencies. Another big advantage of containers is that they provide isolation similar to virtual machines. This prevents conflicting dependencies from breaking your app. However, containers are much more resource efficient and they're faster to start up. Why is that? To understand the answer to that question, you need to know the differences between how containers and virtual machines actually work. A virtual machine works like this. On the bottom is your computer hardware, and on top of that is the operating system. Next, we have the hypervisor. This is an application which runs one or more virtual machines for you. Each VM runs a guest operating system, and on that guest operating system runs the applications that you wanted isolated. The good thing about virtual machines is that they provide a lot of isolation. If a hacker gains control over a VM, they'd need to burrow through the guest OS and the hypervisor before they could take control over the host. The downside of VMs is the fact that they're slow to start up and resource intensive. After all, they run a guest OS and a hypervisor. Containers, on the other hand, work completely differently. They're made possible by Linux kernel features like namespaces and cgroups. Let's take a minute to go over how they work. Each container gets its own set of namespaces. For instance, a container gets its own PID namespace. The result is that processes in the container cannot see or interact with processes outside of the container. Here's another example. Each container gets its own network namespace. Therefore, the container gets its own ports, network stack, etc. Every container also gets its own UTS namespace, which means that it has its own host name. There are a few more namespaces, but you get the idea. Namespaces are a huge part of the reason why things in a container appear isolated from things outside of the container. Control groups, or C groups as they're often called, are the other key ingredient. They set limits on how much compute resources, CPU, memory, and bandwidth, that a containerized process can consume. So how is this different than a VM, and what's the big deal? First off, containers do not need a hypervisor nor do they run a full guest operating system. You see, containers actually share the kernel with the host operating system. This makes them very small and quick to start up. As a result, a computer is able to run many containers at once, where it could only run a small number of VMs at the same time. That's significant. It enables you to have many small containerized services that make up a single application. In other words, containers and microservices complement each other. Containers have their weaknesses. Most of the downsides result from the fact that containers share the kernel with the host OS. Here are some of those downsides. First, containers only run on a variant of the host OS, such as Ubuntu containers running on an Arch Linux host. Consequently, you basically cannot run Mac or Windows containers. Another downside to containers is that they provide less isolation than virtual machines. Any flaw in the kernel could allow a hacker to gain control over the host machine from a compromised container. Clearly, containers aren't the solution to every problem, but they do have some significant advantages, especially when dealing with a microservice application. That's why so many companies have adopted them, and yet there's a whole cadre of unresolved problems. That's 
where Kubernetes comes in.